Thank you. Thank you very much. The Idi Amin Memorial Lecture coming out coming up now. Uh, that is to say in the year 2023. Uh, and yet I mean that died in 2003 on the 16th of August. That is, that is to say 20 years later has been prompted by a number of things. First and foremost, a memorial lecture is a, a speech given to a group of people, to an audience, to remind the people, to remind the audience about the good or the work of an important person or an important event that has passed. And yet people maybe of a new generation should be made aware of really what happened and how it happened and why the way it, why it happened the way it happened. There are a number of memorial lectures which have been in, had in Uganda here. For example, uh, Dr. Paul Milton Obote Memorial Lecture, which has been going on and on for a long time. It has been held here in Kampala Sheraton Hotel, I remember prominently, in 2017, and in many other places. Uh, again, the memorial lecture like the Kiwanuka, Justice Kiwanuka Memorial Lecture, Professor Mutebile Memorial Lecture, only the one of Idi Amin has never been heard. And this question comes strongly because of that. Why now? Uh, first and foremost, maybe you could also say, why did it delay so much like this? It delayed partly because of fear, and mainly because of fear. You know, the image of Idi Amin has been negatively branded uh, to the extent that he, he was portrayed as a bad, a bad person, a bad thing, n not to be touched, not to be talked about, and, and, and the people feared to, to, to talk about Idi Amin. In more so to organize a memorial lecture. There have been memorial prayers going on, but in, in a low scale, quiet, quietly. In Bombo, it has been done, where, I mean, Dada grew up. Uh, he has a family member here in Bombo. It was also done in places like Ibuyale, in Koboko. Now, this year's memorial prayer is taking place in Bombo, actually beginning today the 16th of August and ending on the 18th of August. Now alongside the memorial prayers came feelings of organizing a memorial lecture. Uh, for the earlier lectures, like for the one of Dr. Milton Obote, it was organized by the party, UPC, and the family members. And I think why it delayed, the one of them delayed so much was uh, apart from the issue of the fear, there was no political organization, no political leadership uh, concerned about the image of a leader or uh, the, the legacy of a leader. Now, for us, members of the generation of the current uh, political leadership in West Nile, we have woken up to something painful. And this is what has made us to ask the question, how did that mean? work, how, what did he do? Did he do anything good or bad? And uh, this thing which has woken us up is collective victimization of the people of Amin, quote-unquote. Collective victimization as if there was like a collective guilt and a collective punishment for the people of Amin, open and close quotes. The people of Amin here are comprised of number one, generally Muslims all over Uganda. After the fall of the Idi Id Amin regime, these groups of people were treated badly in all corners. Remember from the West, there were Barara massacres, treatment, treatment of Muslims that side. And then the people of the Nubian community, another community, a social group associated with the Amin, and they are also, they are also not only in one place, 
they are in almost all towns. They are in Bombo largely. Uh, the base is here, but they are in West Nile, they are in, in, in Fort Fort, in different towns. The, the, bomb, the, the, the Nubians felt victimized, targeted, mistreated, and yet unfairly uh, for many of them. Then West Nile as a collective community of people, as a region, whether they are Muslims or not Muslims, as long as they are West Nilers, whether they are Nubians or not Nubians, whether they are Lubara, they are Kakwa, they are Lur. West Nile has many tribes, uh, but after the fall of the, the regime of Idi Amin, West Nile as a region remained uh, a region under collective punishment, as if they were under a collective guilt where they are supposed to be punished for being people of Idi Amin or associated with the, 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 the things which are put on Idi Amin. Now for us, we also want to understand and want the younger generation to know what really happened during Idi Amin's regime. We want to re-examine uh, the, the work and the contribution of Idi Amin to the development of Uganda. Again, there is also another thing coming up from the positive side, not the side of complaint against something like victimization. If you go around Kampala today, you go around the trading centers, not only even in Kampala, because of the hard economy of today, there are many people who are remi remembering Amin positively. They are talking positively of, of Amin. You go and uh, start a, a conversation around the streets of Kampala, you go to Chikubo, go to Owino, go to Nakasero Market, you talk about the economy, talk about the market, talk about business, how black people are getting aged out in the business, especially the business of wholesale manufactured goods, which come from factories, which are uh, at most now controlled and managed by Indians. Ugandans begin complaining and they begin remembering about remembering Idi Amin. Now, for us now, when you look into the other side of the written history of Uganda, most of the things which are written are based on the negative branding of Idi Amin. Uh, that this was a butcher, uh, Idi Amin was a killer. Some even went to the extent of telling people that Idi Amin ate human flesh, that he ate one of his sons, and yet the son is been living, has been living up to today. Uh, we've been hearing about these things. So, talking about Idi Amin in that bad light, and talking about Idi Amin in the good light, has prompted uh, critical thinkers to ask questions. How was Idi Amin? How did he work? How did he do his things? What was his contribution to the development of Uganda, especially in the area of patriotism, nationalism? And then, in the wider sense, African sense, the wider African continent, in the continental settings, there are also people now making references to Uganda positively and uh, to Amin positively. The positivity to Uganda comes from the context of uh, the liberation struggle of Africans on the African continent and in the diaspora. The, the, the struggles of the, the African people to emancipate themselves from uh, domination, foreign and white domination for, for particularly. They look at Uganda positively. That I mean, I mean, they talk about I mean. If you go out to places like America, Washington, there are places where when you go, and you mention that you are from Uganda, people look at you and ask about I mean. Not from a bad light, but from a good light. Now, again, the recent, happen uh, the, the, the recent happenings of military coups in African countries like Mali, Burkina Faso, Guinea, and recently Niger, has also tickled minds of critical thinkers in the world of academia to ask the questions. That, ah, we thought long after African countries got independence, the problem of uh, military rules would have ended. 
But why is it that uh, military coups are coming again and again, they are occurring again and again? Yet the people who are deemed to be bad people, prone to take action in terms of military coups, the uneducated soldiers, like the way they, they wanted to refer to Amin all the times, are long gone. Amin is, no, is long gone. And there are people still who are emerging and acting like Idi Amin. Why? Why now? From the African setting. And some of these guys are also highly educated people, trained from Western military academies, like from the case of those military leaders in West Africa. Many of them were trained in American military schools, French military academies, it is, it is, and they are the ones who have overthrown democratic governments in West Africa. And the, the African Union, which is the success organization to the OAU, has been condemning such military coups. Regional blocs of countries, organizations like ECOWAS, for, for example, have come up and to say we condemn coups. Right now, as we speak, there is a problem of uh, possibility of military interventions into Niger, spearheaded under the umbrella of, of, of ECOWAS. And again, with the support or with the influence of a former colonial master, France. So now, where does the African Union stand on issues of uh, independence of the African countries vis-a-vis -vis the problem of new colonialism, the new uh, arrival, the recolonization of Africa? You find there are so many bases, military bases, foreign military bases on the African continent today. If you come not only to the side of West Africa, you come to East, Af East Africa, the Horn of Africa, you have so many uh, foreign military uh, bases. In the case, in the point, you go to Djibouti, you go to Somalia, uh, and you go to Sudan. Recently there was uh, a controversy about the possibility of uh, Russia establishing a military base on the Red Sea in, 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 in Sudan. And then America saying, hey, Sudan don't allow Russia to come here. And the Russia saying, hey, you people, you're also here, what are you doing here? So the struggle between superpowers for presence in Africa, for, for military presence in Africa, is a question to be examined. Because you see, the coup that brought Idi Amin to power had some connections with the foreign military powers. The plan to overthrow the government of Dr. Paul Milton Obote in the military coup that brought Idi Amin to power was made by capitalists, by countries of the West, who looked at Obote as a threat to their economic interests because of a book, uh, the, the agenda called the, the Common Man's Charter, which was deemed to be like a, a communist or a socialist tendency of the government of Obote. So those people wanted Obote out from power. Now, they found a person called Idi Amin to do for them the work. But Idi Amin also disappointed them by turning against them and then also embracing people like Fidel Castro the communist bloc, the socialist countries, people like Mahmoud Gaddafi. And again, the West came and supported the overthrow of Amin. The Amin they brought to power, they also turned around to overthrow him. Now, with these things happening like this, we would like to re-examine, re we would like to re-examine the what? The contribution of Idi Amin to the development of Uganda, patriotism, nationalism, and the liberation struggles of the African people in Africa and the diaspora, and also the legacy of Idi Amin. Uh, are there some countries which are uh, trying to borrow a leaf from Idi Amin that uh, you overthrow a government, uh, put a military government in place, and then try to do certain things to please the people, etc.? Because if you, see to, uh, you look at West Africa today, there are people who support those military coups, civilians. So very contradictory. Democratic governments are supposed to be deemed to, uh, are supposed to be 
uh, civilian government supported by the civilians. But now, these are military governments coming up to remove a civilian government. And the military government seem to be supported by the civilians. Why is it so? So, this memorial lecture of Idi Amin has a, a regional dimensions in the context of West Nile, national dimensions in the context of Uganda, and international dimensions in the context of Africa in the struggle for economic liberation, economic freedom, free and, free and fair distribution of, of resources and opportunities, economic resources and opportunities to the people of Uganda and Africa as a whole. This is where we are coming from. You see, Idi Amin, when you look at Idi Amin, you, you just start a debate even in a car like this, in a taxi, in a bus. You find there are people who will stand up, who will speak out strongly in support of Idi Amin, and there are others strongly speaking against Idi Amin. So, the, the, the picture of Idi Amin, really, in the court of public opinion, in the ordinary Ugandans, is very confusing. You cannot, co you cannot say Amin was good, and you go away unchallenged. You cannot say Amin was bad, and you go away unchallenged. So, we want to re-examine this. When you go into books, unfortunately, you find things which are written are mostly the negative, the negative ones. But where do these people who think about Idi Amin positively get their records from? It means there are certain records in the minds of people, in the hearts of people, which are not written down. So we want to do this memorial lecture in a way to tickle the minds of people to do research about Idi Amin, the legacy of Idi Amin. Idi Amin also made some contributions, you can see, positive ones to the development of Uganda. Some of the things are still standing. If you look around here, uh, UDB, Uganda Railways, uh, these are projects which came with the creation of Idi Amin. Uganda Airlines, which President Seven sold, but I think he thought it wise to bring it back. So it's still Uganda Airlines, which is flying, you see here, was initiated by Idi Amin. Though the current one has more shares of foreigners than uh, or, or private individuals than the government. During Idi Amin, Uganda Airlines was more of a government, a public institution. So this one has more shares of, of, of other people. So we need to re-examine Idi Amin really. It is not easy to sweep Idi Amin under the carpet. See? And yet he was in power only for eight years. So that's the thing. Now again, what I see as a, an issue which requires people to re-examine more the life and the work of Idi Amin is this thing of fear. Fear in the regime in power and some people in the office. Because people fear because of the reaction, the expected reactions of people in government. Remember when Idi Amin died? There was supposed to be prayers organized for him here. Janaza prayers. I mean, yeah, Janaza is the, the, the requiem mass equivalent for the Christians. It was supposed to be done at Old Kampala Mosque, but it was rejected out of fear. The, the establishment feared it. And the, the, the Janaza, the prayers, the, the funeral prayer for Idi Amin was done at, at Kibuli instead. And as the prayer was taking place, a military chopper came and flew over the people. That was in 2003. This is the story now coming out. Why? Why is it so? Why are the people fearing so much? I mean, it's not there now. This is just an academic discussion. Why should people fear the memorial lecture? Chief? It is a man coming back, walking on his feet eh, with the guns. This is like talking about other people who have ever been portrayed negatively in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the history and people write about them, they talk about them in the lectures. Like Hitler, if you go to, to, to books, bookshops, or libraries, you find books about Hitler, people read and there's no problem about it. So why should there be a problem with Amin when people are talking about Amin today? So for us, we are saying uh, Ugandans should feel free to discuss this matter of the memorial lecture of Idi Amin. We have reached out to the Minister of National Guidance, 
Honorable Dr. Chris Bariamosi, and we have uh, uh, asked him to give the national guidance to this matter because he's the Minister of National Guidance. So he has accepted to be the chief guest in the memorial lecture, uh, which has been proposed to take place in Mon University, and uh, on the 1st of September 2023. And uh, we have invited also a number of people. This is a, the list of people we have put here. We would like to, to talk about this. Uh, has it been cleared at Muni Controversies? <laughs> controversies. Okay, well, you see what you see here is a concept. This idea, a concept paper is an idea paper. And the development of this concept paper involved the people even from Muni University. So the claim by uh, one of the persons from Muni University through a letter written and, and issued in social media that Muni was not informed, Muni was not involved. Uh, when it was not consulted, was, uh, was not correct. Because, uh, look at this, there is an email here I want to show for you. An email from uh, Muni University, given by one of the persons who was involved in the early stages of writing the concept paper. We made phone calls, we chatted on uh, WhatsApp, that there is an idea of uh, organizing a memorial lecture. And among many alternative venues, Muni University has been suggested to be the one to host this memorial lecture. Get to know about it, number one. Number two, what is your opinion about it? Is it okay? Can we bring it here? Because there are many other people, there are other places which were considered for this. Now, Muni was uh, chosen more out of the other places. And then this person in the name of Professor Odubaker Picho Epiphany, who is the Deputy Vice Chancellor in charge of Finance and Administration, said, ah, we can host this thing. Let us develop the concept paper. Now the concept paper was developed and in the process of sharing with the people, you know this thing of sharing something, when some of the people are here, others are in Arua. When you, you put something like this, for people's opinion, find it has gone out viral. It is this paper here. Concept is an idea paper. It's a concept, it's like a proposal still. So, uh, when this thing, this, this uh, reaction from Muni came out, we had to clarify. We said, no, it's not true that we never informed Muni, we never consulted the Muni. Look at this email. And in this Idi Amin Memorial Lecture, there are a number of issues also. There are actually four things going together. There's a memorial prayers starting today, ending on Friday. And then also there is an idea of a memorial tour where Ugandans and people from West Nile would like to go to, to see the place where Idi Amin lived in exile and where he died and where he was buried. You see, there is this kind of attachment we have as human beings with the dead, our relatives. That's why when someone dies from far, they bring the body and the body is buried home. There's a debate on as to whether or not to bring the body of Idi Amin and Ribari in Uganda. People are talking about this. And you see in the army, there is a song, UPDF soldiers sing. The message in it goes like this, that if I die, don't bury me here, take my body home to my people. This is both in Israeli and English. Now, with this, there are some people feeling that the body of Idi Amin should be brought back to Uganda and buried home properly, where his people are. But, also according to the teachings of Islam, Idi Amin being a Muslim, myself being a Muslim, there's also this belief we have, the teaching we have, that wherever a Muslim dies, he can be buried there. And when he's buried there, it is okay. But the people who love Amin, the people of Idi Amin are not all Muslims. There are also people who are not Muslims. They don't share in this belief. So there is a debate amongst them. So this memorial lecture is also to re-examine this matter. Should Idi Amin's body be re re retrieved from Saudi Arabia or brought here? Or we take the compromise position that, okay, those who want to see where the body was buried, they can go and see the grave there. That's why we put one of the activities of this memorial activities, uh, the memorial activities is it? prayer and then visit to the place where Idi Amin died. 
Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. He was buried in Saudi Arabia. The exact location of the place, we didn't know with the time as we get the facts. Another issue is left some legacy projects which were not completed. We need to identify these projects and mobilize people to generate resources to finish these projects. For example, if you go to Old Kampala, the Old Kampala Mosque you see, which is the headquarters of the Uganda Muslim Spring Council. This was started by Idi Amin, 1972. And uh, the, fin the finishing was interrupted at the time when Idi Amin's regime was overthrown. But the leadership of Uganda Muslim Spring Council that came after Idi Amin later on reorganized, they reconnected with the potential funders, the funders that previously withdrew after the, 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 the war, the overthrow of Idi Amin, including Saudi Arabia and, and Libya. But Libya came and provided money. That's how that mosque has been completed, including the shopping malls, the shopping center, you see where tires are sold around Old Kampala. That is a legacy of Idi Amin. Something good he did. There are also others. For example, this mosque in Bombo, where the prayers is taking place, Masjid Nur, another mosque, Masjid in Lira, another one in Koboko, this on the side of Muslims. There are also some development projects which Idi Amin started on the side of government and were not completed. Therefore, these are legacy projects coming out of Idi Amin. We want to identify them and see if we can interest government or the stakeholders to have them completed properly, to the, according to the plan. This much Nur in Bombo has got some kind of finishes done a little bit, but not according to the plan. People are saying this was not the design. We want to have it finished properly. So we would like also to look at this kind of legacy projects. Again, we want to look at the memorial projects. People want to put in place memorial projects. Memorial projects are different from legacy projects in the sense that memorial projects are conceived by people in memory of someone. They are not necessarily from that person, they don't originate from that person. Like now, we, young people of West Nile and Uganda as a whole who think about Ida Min's contribution, we would like to have some memorial projects in the, in the sector of education. For example, something like a peace and security, peace, security and strategic studies institute. Uh, to, to, to study Idi Amin and, and, and establish a, a strategic uh, and defense studies institute, security, defense, strategic studies institute here. This is the thinking. There are people who want to, to, to establish universities in memory of Idi Amin. And to that effect, when we said all these things, Moni University has submitted us this. They have projects also they have designed, which they want to have constructed and sponsored in memory of Idi Amin. One here is a multi-purpose uh, learning and business center in, in Muni University. Uh, this was uh, given by the, they have, they have the, this is artistic impression, but they have the details there of the project. There is also a hostel for boys and a hostel for girls, all to be built in the memory of Idi Amin at the Moon University. These ones were given by the people from Moon University who are involved in the conception of the idea. So for us, we have concluded that uh, what was driving that letter from Muni is not really a uh, lack of information as such, but should it be lack of information, the information is here. We have, uh, we have reconnected with them and we are going to have a meeting. A meeting, uh, the meeting has been scheduled to take place where if there are informational gaps, we are going to identify them and close them, where we shall come up with a consensus on how the lecture will proceed. That is what is there. From Idi Amin's From family, it's here. The people are here. He has been involved in the conception of the idea. You can see here. There is this gentleman in the names of Mr. Jafar Remo Amin. The list of expected participants is here. So, Jafar Remo Amin is the son of the late Idi Amin. There are others also. Their names could not be on this because this 
this, this, this paper is limited. The number of speakers cannot be so many people. So those who are not here will also come. I mean those going to attend. I don't know now because the registration is going on. Who is going to attend? This, we are still in the process of, of uh, registering the people, the participants who are coming. They will express their interest to come. But uh, we, have, uh, we have communicated, we have shared with the members of parliament. I met uh, the chairman of the National Parliamentary Group, Mr. Honorable Songa Lawrence. And in the parliament, there is a granddaughter of Ida Min there the woman MP for Koboko district. We expect her to come and also participate in this. Is a way of this, uh, this is a, a, a something which has gone widely, though I have not spoken to her directly myself, but having spoken to a number of MPs, including the institutional framework, the chairperson of the Western Parliamentary Caucus, through that network, I believe she must have got information. I have spoken to some MPs from Western I called her, in her on her phone, the number didn't go through, but I talked to Honorable Ayome Francis, the, the MP for Koboko Municipality. And uh, I talked to a number of MPs from West Nile, the MP for Arua Municipality, Arua Central Division, not Municipality, Honorable Atimali, uh, Honorable Tomaza, Honorable uh, Woman Member Parliament for Yumbe District, many people. So this is not a secret. We are going to have a meeting with them so that they also bring in their input on how this memorial lecture should go. And uh, I believe many people will attend. The memorial lecture is a good thing for the sake of knowledge. But people who are not interested in knowledge may not also be compelled to go and attend. That's the thing. Even from the family level, there may be some children who, of either men who are not bothered about uh, the legacy of Idi Amin. And besides that, the, the, the issue of Idi Amin cuts across. It goes beyond the family. You see, when you look at this thing of uh, victimization, people who cried about being victimized, they are not only children of Idi Amin. When, when the, the, the regime of Idi Amin fell, majority of the, let me say, all, almost all the children of Idi Amin were in exile. And yet West Nile was uh, set on fire. People were killed. The Ombachi massacre. Do you know this? Something happened, and if in the history of Uganda known as the Ombachi massacre, those people who were massacred there were not children of Idi Amin. Biological children. They are not biological children. So people who are concerned about Idi Amin are not necessarily his children. The negative branding of, of, of the person and the work of Idi Amin is not good, and we who are not necessarily children of Idi Amin have a stake in the history, in the image, and in the future of Idi Amin. That's why we sit together with those who are concerned and those who are interested, and we talk about this. We communicated to him, and you will be informed about the general program. Is he, is he, is he, is he coming, not coming? You will get it. You get to know. But uh, we are in touch with this office right from the conception of this idea. We have communicated the, uh, to all these people. Like, mm, we, we, we reach, like the way we reach to the minister. People who are near here, we just reach them physically. I went to Uganda Muslim Spring Council, Kibuli. I mean, uh, Uganda Muslim Spring Council, uh, Old Kampala. I went there and uh, I met people who are in the office of the Mufti, the Deputy Mufti of Uganda Muslim Supreme Council. The Mufti himself was abroad. Uh, Al-Hajj, his eminence, uh, Hajj, Al-Hajj uh, Mubaje was abroad, but his deputy, we met him, we informed him. Because uh, Uganda Muslim Supreme Council is a key thing when you come to talk about it, I mean, because he was the one who created Uganda Muslim Supreme Council to promote Muslim unity, and uh, people of Uganda Muslim Spring Council may have interest or a message to give us in this lecture, so we involve them. The administration of Uganda Muslim Spring Council, uh, therefore, is uh, in the know, and they are also involved in this. There are key personalities in Uganda, whether they are not holding offices or holding offices, whether they are in old Kampala or not, they, who ought to be informed. And we informed them, for example, Prince Kasim Nakibinge, 
uh, we informed him, we had a meeting with him, because he's also a key person in the Muslim fraternity in Uganda, and, and, and definitely has a, a concerns about Muslim welfare, Muslim uh, issues, and uh, this cry of uh, the Muslims against victimization uh, should be an issue of great concern to somebody who is concerned about the Muslims, like uh, Prince Nakibing uh, Kasim. And, and, and uh, we informed him. Also, there are professors, lecturers in different universities. Uh, like, like here, we see the, the, one of the key speakers put here is a, a Professor Abasi Kiimba of Makere University. Uh, we are looking for knowledge. We need the knowledge from knowledgeable people regardless of where they are and who they are, in terms of religion, politics. Did you try Mambusi and Devesa? Uh, there's another one also in Makere. Uh, he, has, he has written a very interesting book, uh, a book called the uh, Indian Colony, Ugandan Indian Colony. The names are here. Uh, we are yet to get him, but uh, he has been put in our list of people whom we need to get into this. He has written a very good book about, uh, about Idi Amin. So these are the people we consider in this. The options are many. If some turn down the invitation or they say they are not uh, able to, to, to attend, the list is long. There are many people. We have also reached to people like Ofono Pondo. Ofono Pondo is here on the list. He's a government spokesperson. You know that. And... Uh, just like he, Honorable Chris Bariamosi, these are people of government. They, they, they are there, I believe, to guide the debate, the lecture, so that uh, Uganda goes in, in, uh, without diverting uh, beyond the, the, the realms of knowledge. So for us, we have thought about this thing, and uh, it is an open thing. There is no secret. There is nothing hidden about it. It is put to the domain. If you don't like it, you speak and say, why don't you like it? Which area is not okay for you? Where do you want it to be changed? If Lastly, yes. security. Why should this be cleared by security? Recently, there was a, a similar lecture about Idi Amin in Makere University, where there was a Professor Mamdani, Mam, Mam and others, they, they talked about things in Makere. It did not need a lot of pro procedure, procedure. It is the same Amin here. Now, when we are talking about Amin, and we are taking the issue about Amin to money, why should it require security? This is a matter also which is open. Let the security people come and talk in that meeting. So this is a dialogue. This is a, a meeting which requires intellectual engagement. So it is not a matter of intelligence where people talk secretly, they talk in low voices. No, this one we put it on TV and we have programmed it that it is going to be covered live. So there's no secrets about that. So there's no need to fear here. There's no need for permission if there is still freedom of expression in Uganda here. If there is still freedom of expression under the 70 rule, as those in the government claim. So let us talk about it, I mean. If you don't agree with the views of other people expressed about Idi Amin, you express yours. You challenge them in a debate so that uh, we, we, we come up with the concrete and balanced knowledge. We would like Idi Amin to be remembered in a balanced manner. Not this biased way of saying he was a butcher, he was this and that, and uh, people who have contrary views as a press that don't talk, don't say anything about the Idi Amin. So if you are correct, why do you fear the words of other people? You see? If your views about Idi Amin are correct, allow them to be challenged by the views of other people so that yours will still stand strong even against the challenge brought by another people, another group of people. So this is the thing. So we should consider this from the perspective of academic affairs. A university should be a center for generation of knowledge. And this comes through a lot of discourses, debates, research, but not preaching one side like you, you are given a Bible, you are given the Quran, 
that this is the Quran, read and preach to people. Universities are not preaching centers of history where you go and preach the negative history of Idi Amin and you preach. You want people to take it like that. That is not a university. So for us, Muni University should emerge as an international center of intellectualism. That is what you want. <laughs> Thank you. Mm. These projects which are, which are submitted by Muni University are valued to a tune of $12.22 million. And they are to be constructed under the scheme of Idi Amin Dada Memorial Projects. So this came from the university after a discussion and we still consider this positively. So we are going to sit with the, uh, all the stakeholders of Muni University and we shall uh, weigh out and get a middle line on how best this memorial lecture should be conducted. Otherwise, we are still in the process of consultations and uh, those who have not yet been consulted physically, maybe your time is coming. We have consulted many others and the consultation process is still going on. Is the date of the, the lecture confirmed? The date of the lecture, which is here, was fixed by the, by, the, by the chief guest, which means he's available. You know, when you're organizing a big meeting like this, you start from the chief guest. So the, the chief guest has said, I will be available to go to Muni on the 1st of September. So we are still working with that date of the 1st of September. Yes. The key things we need in this memorial lecture in terms of information are four. Number one, things which were done by Idi Amin and were recorded in the history of Uganda or Idi Amin's history or books about Idi Amin. Things which he did and were correctly recorded under his story. We want to identify them and say this one he did and has been recorded here, we say tick. There are also things which have been recorded under Idi Amin's history. Especially bad things that he did them. And yet he did not do them. We want to identify those badly recorded things in the history of Idi Amin, identify them and delete them from the history. Things which he did not do and have been recorded in the history of Idi Amin that he did, them, we want this one to be identified and deleted from the history. And then there are also things which Idi Amin did, especially good ones, and have not been recorded under his history. We want to identify this, especially from people who were there during Idi Amin's regime. We would like them to speak out. And then we bring these things and add them to the history of Idi Amin. At the end of the day, we want Idi Amin to be remembered in a balanced way, with all these things taken into consideration. Then, we would like to identify projects, leg legacy projects. Idi Amin started to do them. They emerged from him, and they have not been completed. Others are completed. We want the legacy projects to be identified. Those which are not finished, to be finished. And then we want, with the opinion, then we want memorial projects. These are the things we want in this memorial lecture. Yes. Hmm? You cut it off when, you, 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 when I was saying... No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. I, I, I did not. Hmm? I did not. I was hearing when I, the thing came like you were starting no, to... I, I have not even cut off. I'm just going to cut off.